Dark coming into this game focused on the front court matchup. A lot of talent in the low post here. And, you know, a lot of times that means it'll come down to the rebounding battle. Whoever controls the boards will have a big leg up in the physical and mental aspect of this game. Here we go. And the Pacers start off with the ball. Now, here's Halliburton. Defense is right there. And it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Hunter. Pass to Archibald. Down to five on the shot clock. That one's in his first shot of this game. The D's got to bring more than that. Come on now. Because Archibald is skilled at scoring through contact. You got to play him harder than that. For three, Harris. A shot goes in. First shot, first basket. He's just so good from out there, even when the defense is tight. Here's Archibald, defended by Young. Here's Siaka. That's a miss, his second after two shots. Look at the last game for the Atlanta Hawks. It was a win against Boston. Young pass to Hunter. Launches a three. It's good from long range. A very consistent three-point shooter. Hunter shoots it well from there because of how confident he is. If you know him well, the Pacers winning three championships in the ABA back in the 70s. But they're still looking for their first NBA title. Yeah, exactly. They played in the finals. Took the Lakers to six games. But that was over two decades ago. And right now, they're playing in a very crowded and tough Eastern Conference. So first quarter just over a minute and a half in. And a foul on Joe Harris. That is his first foul of the game. I mean, that's a tough break for the D. I mean, he took the hit and drew the whistle. Yeah, but he was late to get there, so the referee couldn't give him a free pass on that one. And that rejection had some mustard on it. Huge, huge play. Tell you what, early in the game, these kinds of plays can really set the tone. Here's Archibald. He's been a reliable scorer for him as he's averaging up over 13 points a game. You yeah, love the job they've done here to protect the paint. I like the way they've kept them shooting jump shots. No coincidence to find them in the lead. A three, Hunter. The basket good off the assist from Young. Young's got three assists tonight. Oh, great ball movement there. So the Pacers call timeout their first of the game. Check out the power rankings. See how the teams are stacking up across the league. Take a look at the Grizzlies. They've achieved some upward momentum, climbing to the fifth spot on the board. And right now for the Hawks, they continue to obliterate expectations because they found a way to get the most out of the guys on this roster. Here's Archibald. And the game against Detroit, very impressive. Down low, Boozer. Shot to stop the run. He takes it up and lays it in. And great job being in the right place. And, and give Boozer credit for the extra effort there on the glass. Young pass to Hunter. Count the bucket coming off a perfectly placed assist. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they shot the basketball. Very high percentage so far. And if you want to start a game hot, that's the way to do it. Now, here is Halliburton. Last time out, he had 14 points and finished off by Siakam. A clean pass that time from Halliburton to a wide-open teammate. Just smart ball movement there. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free-throw line. They get Carlos Boozer. And a moment here to take a look at the scoring breakdown for the Hawks. You know, right from the start, it seemed they got hot from three-point range, pulling apart the defense and racking up the points, too. And I really liked how they moved the ball tonight. Because of this selfless approach, they are piling up the assists. The Pacers making a change here. Jackson's checked in. Now, here's Siakam. His last outing, 16 points for him. A shot's good from Halliburton. 
I think because Halliburton can knock down that three with regularity, you've got to defend him closely at all times. Uh, Greg, there's a lot of impressive things about Tyrese Halliburton, most notably how efficient he is. Yeah, Kevin, those percentages are terrific. But not only that, he's phenomenal at it, making sure he keeps his teammates involved. Just a remarkable young point guard. Hey, Clark, thinking back to that Halliburton for Sabonis trade, what are your thoughts? I think it's one of those situations where it was a win-win all the way around, Greg. You think about it. The Kings benefited, the Pacers did. Young players that have stardom in their future. And I think both players are going to be multi-time All-Stars. John Stockton, he's checked in for the Pacers. And Young kicks to Harris. High in the pass to Young. Tries again. Basket is good. He'll get a chance for one more at the line. And, and getting after it on the offensive glass and adding to that early total with the putback. How about early attack mode? I love the approach he's coming to this game with. Really strong. By this time in the year, Clark, for teams that have exceeded expectations, can we expect that this is their new normal? I think so. I mean, once that kind of data is in the bank, regression usually would happen earlier. So at this point, I think it's just about building consistency from game to game. And so it's Atlanta with it. The Pacers making the shot. Count it. Hunter's got 13. The Swain intensity right off the opening tip especially on the offensive end. Tell you what, forget about easing into the game. They came out with punt blazing. Now, here's Siaka. Taking a look at the scoring numbers right now, he averages about nine points a game. As fast as lightning, Halliburton gets it and shoots it in a matter of nanoseconds. Young best to Hunter. For three, Harris, his shot is good, making him a perfect two for two from the floor. Outstanding start from three-point range. Their shooters are on fire. It really makes them a hard team to guard because they space you out so well. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure these guys can keep this up. High-octane action for sure. Crowd-pleasing already. Ryan, no good. And here's Halliburton. He'll bring it up for Indiana. Eight-point game. Here's Jackson, and the dunk by Jackson. Oh, that's a major league throwdown. Keeps a tight grip on that rim, too, after the finish. Maybe that'll help them recapture their edge a little bit, guys. Now here is Harris. He has six. Here's Hunter. Again, the Hawks, good for two. A solid mid-range shooter. Hunter knows where his strengths are. Halliburton feeling it out a bit. In the corner, it's Stockton. Siakam kicks to Halliburton. Here's Archibald. And right there, Young may never have the physical tools to be a great defender, but his competitiveness overrides it. The scoring fast and furious as we end the first quarter. Hawks lead by eight. 2K Sports back in a moment here in Atlanta. again for tuning in if you're just joining us we've played through one quarter of action so far and for the Hawks guys what stands out to you stance one coming in hot they were sharp from the perimeter right out of the gate well the player and ball movement has been excellent finding space operating in space and when they've gotten open shots they've knocked them down they're going to turn it over they couldn't get it in bounds that time and a look now at some of the players we can expect to see in this year's dunk contest. Always one of the great events of All-Star Weekend. It is, Kevin. You just can't take your eyes off it. The ideas those guys come up with and then the guts it takes to pull them off always blows me away. You take a look at Hunter. Almost all the way up there on the top spot. I don't know if he'll make it to number one. But you'd have to say he's going to be a part of the contest for sure. It's looking that way. And the contest will be a lot better off 
having him in it. He always puts on a show. And as always, we'll keep the updates coming in as we get closer to All-Star Weekend. One thing we already know, there are some great players pulling in votes so far. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that this is going to be one of those duck contests that everybody's going to be tuning into. So with Boozer on the bench, here's who Rick Carlisle's going with. They've got Jackson. Williams is out there with Stockton. Then there's Benedict Matherin. And it's Dantley in at the power forward position. And with an update from the sidelines, let's check in with David Aldridge. Thank you, Kevin. These days, the ball is in Pascal Siakam's hands. He says it means everything. Being on the ball just gives you a better rhythm. I don't think it's hard. It's just something you grow into. I have those images in my head of where I want to get to. Now, defenses often look to double, and he said, if I played me, I would do that too. Kevin? <laughs> All right, David, thank you. Now, here's Joseph. Prince outside. Drills it from outside. Prince has got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. Coming into the league, scouts predicted Prince would be a solid 3 and D specialist, and they were spot on. And Bogdanovich picks up the foul. That is his first foul of the game. He's so for the Hawks, Hunter's checked in for DeJounte Murray. Iguodala comes in for Torian Prince. And it's John Wall in for Corey Joseph. And a change for the Pacers. Ibaka's checked in. Quarter number two with just over a minute gone. Boozer with a screen for Williams. No good off the back of the rim. Atlanta leading by six. Iguodala dishes to Hunter. And Boozer with the block. And some aggressive defense from Boozer just attacking that shot. Pass to Danley. Fires top of the key. Green with the rebound. And it's Wall with the ball for Atlanta. They've led by as much as 10. Their last game, a win against Boston, looking to carry it into this one. And the bench turned up in that one. Whatever they couldn't get from their starters, they got from the reserves. Well, you know, you hear about the importance of having depth all the time. Bench players that contribute. And last game, their bench came alive. And here is Williams after the three-pointer from Andre Iguodala. Very dangerous to leave a guy like that open. Lucky break there for the D. A 15-footer. Green, no luck. Looking at the last game for the Indiana Pacers, it was a win against Detroit. Here's Stockton. And once again, off the mark by Indiana. Atlanta leading by nine. In the corner, Iguodala with it. Good. Great play by Green to set it up. Iguodala's got six in the quarter. Their third three-pointer in a row. Adjustment time for these guys. The defense has to make some adjustment here. Time called here. Indiana decides to talk it over. As the teams head into this timeout, a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game. Absolutely. Over the course of a game, you have to stay hydrated. take a moment to view the league's leading rebounders. You take a look at Hunter. No doubt one of the most efficient rebounders in the game. And guys, his rebounding has taken a lot of pressure off their other bigs. It, it frees those guys up to contribute in a lot of other ways. 
Halliburton right side. And there's a nice one-handed slam. The finish was nice, but the setup was better. Yeah, G.A., the pick working to full effect before the stuff. And, you know, not enough help from the defense there to compensate. He gets a clean look, and that's exactly how you draw it up. Pacers trail by 10. The pass to Boozer. And Boozer throws it down. It's not a guy you want to dunk over. You Boozer with a head of steam there. Head to the rim. Iguodala finds Hunter. Over Boozer. And there's Hunter on the assist by Iguodala. Nine points for Big Dog. Uh, unwilling to let up even for a moment. That's his killer instinct just fanning the flames. Yeah, I love the fact he doesn't play the score. He just keeps coming. Attack mode. He doesn't know how to step off the gas pedal. Yeah, but the hand in the face. It's critical that you contest his shots every time down the floor. And Atlanta calls their first time out of the game. They went to Indiana for their last meeting with the Pacers and came out with a win. And the last time these two met, they were able to get a big win because of that bench production. Second unit might be a factor in this one as well. And you know what? If they run away with this game like they did in that one, I'd expect to see plenty of minutes again for the guys coming off the bench. The Pacers making a switch here. Jackson's checked in. And so it's Iguodala. He'll bring it up for the Hawks. And that's going to be a turnover. They call him for eight seconds. You know, Clark, I remember you had such a strong mid-range game when you were playing. Do you think it would have been hard to stretch your game out to three like a lot of guys are doing now? You know what, Kevin? It's interesting. I was actually starting to try to add the three-point shot to my game way back in the mid-'80s as part of my development. So I don't think it's hard. It's a matter of putting the work in. And shooting is one of those skills in the game that can really be refined with good mechanics and just volume of work. So it's the Pacers now following the three-pointer from DeAndre Hunter. Here's Hunter. <laughs> Count the bucket, and he's got a free throw coming up as well. His shooting has been outstanding. <laughs> Definitely one of the reasons they're up in this game. The Atlanta shooting their fourth shot at the foul line here. And they've had really good numbers all season from the free throw line. And guys, that's really an upgrade over how they shot last season. Not a huge upgrade, but an upgrade nonetheless. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. Ball, that's good. Yeah, they're relying on their three-point shooting and getting pretty good results. Archibald passes to Halliburton, and Halliburton slams it in. Some of the best court vision you've ever seen. Nate Tiny Archibald does it again. The basket counts and one. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it a three-point play. And that's the kind of move that will always pay off, even against tight defense like he was facing on that possession. First trip to the free throw line for him tonight. Well, there's no denying that when Wall is healthy, he is still a major threat in this league. I mean, he's lightning quick as a point guard, and he has tremendous defensive instincts. Now, here is Halliburton. Ten points for him. And the dunk by Boozer. Yeah, just solid work on the back end of that play. Yep, you're right. Finish hard with two hands on that stuff. Yeah, highly efficient. Nothing extra special there. Just effective. And when he's on the floor, offensive rebounding is always going to be a strength for him. Greg, he keeps so many possessions alive, doesn't he? And you know, those second chance opportunities can be game changing. He represents so much value to this team because of what he does. So versatile offensively. When Hunter gets in a rhythm, he's capable of carving up a defense. And it's Halliburton missing. Stolen. And so it's the Atlanta Hawks cruising into the quarter break with a 22-point lead. From the field, they have been outstanding. Amazing shooting. That's what has them headed to a blowout. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks very much with Rick Carlisle. Coach, what needs to happen on the defensive end to get back on track? Well, a lot of things need to get better. Uh, our level of force defensively is not. Thanks for the great interview, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of basketball following halftime.
Hey everybody, nothing like a little trade news to perk up your day. We'll take a look first at some transactions around the NBA. They wanted some real oomph down low, and Rudy Gobert is here to deliver. A guy you can trust to completely own the paint on the defensive end. This instantly makes them a tough matchup for smaller teams. And back to the matchup at hand. Everything has been going smoothly for the Hawks. They've been the better passing team tonight, by far. Everyone's looking engaged, involved. They have great chemistry out there. Yeah, you can see these guys enjoying playing together. That makes everything easier. Practice, traveling, all of it. Thanks for spending halftime with us. Time to get it back out to Kevin Harlan for the start of the third quarter. the second half upon us we'll find out if this game becomes the route that it's threatening to be it's been a clinic out there by deandre hunter man he's been running wild on him through that first half absolute dynamite on offense and you know what i'll be interested to see just how much he's got left in the tank that first half had to take a lot out of him. all out there with bogdanovich and there's a good out then there's hunter and it's hunter in at the four that's the group starting the second half for Quinn Snyder. Siakam. And finished off by Siakam. A defense focused on Boozer's scoring ability, and he found an outlet with a great look there. A three, Hunter. And that comes off the assist by John Wall. Wall's got three assists now in this one. It's time now to hear from our Hall of Fame reporter, David Aldridge. What's the latest, David? Thanks, Kevin. The Pacers are a team on the rise, and Tyrese Halliburton says one of the favorite parts about the way we're building the culture here is it's not just showing up for a game, and that's it. We watch games, text about games, talk about games when we get to the arena. I just want to be around guys who love basketball and want to be great. Kevin? Isn't that special, David? Hey, thanks for that report. And so here is Indiana. Following the three from Bogdan Bogdanovich. Five on the clock. Siakam a screen on wall. And the basket is good, and he's got a chance here for one more at the line. On a nice little roll here to start this half, connecting on their first three attempts. You know what you love seeing from Pascal Siakam is his confidence continuing to grow. And Kevin, especially when it comes to scoring. Pascal understands how valuable he is to his team and how much they lean on him to step up on that end. Here's what Atlanta's going with right now. Pokashevsky's checked in for DeAndre Hunter. Torian Prince comes in for Bogdan Bogdanovich. Young is subbed in for John Wall. It's been this way since halftime. Tremendous production from beyond the arc. Boy, it's been a three-point barrage. They came out gunning and have not stopped. I'm just so impressed with Siakam's offensive improvement over the years. I mean, he's mastering the ability to play in attack mode. The Pacers have been good at the line so far, 5 of 5. He doesn't get the second one. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. And it's been a well-rounded performance. I mean, strong rebound and has certainly been, at, been at, the, at the center of it, but it's been good on a number of levels. So it's the Pacers now following the three by Atlanta. Here's Archibald. He's got six. Nailed from three-point land. How about dueling from long range, just going at each other? Looks to me like there could be something personal taking place here. They have come out of halftime in Fuego. Pass to Siakam. Halliburton against Iguodala. Halliburton kicks to Siakam. Rebound Atlanta. And, you know, that's their first miss after knocking down four in a row to start the half. Young passes to Prince. Here's Pakusevsky. Got three off the mark. The Pacers have gotten four of their first five second half shots to fall. 80% since the break. For Atlanta, they've gotten six of their seven shots to go down in this quarter. What a fantastic start to the half. A moment now to see how the schedule is looking for the Pacers. On Friday, they'll go up against Bradley Beal. And then on Sunday, 
Payton I'll be facing Steven Adams. Adams. Stockton's checked in for Indiana. And so Stockton will bring it up for Indiana. Pass to Siakam. Elbow shot. Good. He hits the jump shot. Siakam's got eight points in the quarter. And you can just see he's a different player since coming back from halftime. Young dishes to Iguodala. Back to Young. With the fadeaway. No good. And that's really just not heads up basketball. Don't try a fadeaway when the full body's guarding you. And the whistle blow. It's going to be on Andre Iguodala. His first. That's his first foul. Yeah, man, that's it's close, but you know, didn't get on balance quick enough. Yeah, and as quick as players are at this level in this day and age, I mean, you've got to be perfect in your anticipation to draw the charge. Hunter, no good. And you can see the defenders afraid to kind of get in his way a lot of times when he's on his way to the basket. But on that one, they were there. Stockton will drive it, but he also can pull up too. Very versatile when he's got the ball in his hands. Young with the ball. Halliburton picks him up. Atlanta again missing. Indiana's gone one of two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. And the rejection by Igudala. Here's Hunter. Good for the basket. Number nine. He's only missed two shots from the floor all night. And a breakdown here, guys. The hustle stats for the Hawks. Uh, they've been active defensively, rotating well, and, and then also closing out on shots. It's resulted in a number of blocks. And I love the fact they kept the pressure on, really pushing that ball, running it up the floor. I love seeing that. A team staying aggressive even when they're playing well. Such a hype mismatch out on the perimeter, and they give up the triple. Here's Halliburton. He sinks the 11-footer. Halliburton's got 12 in the game. I like the way Halliburton continues to take more responsibility on the offensive end. His game warrants that he does that. Nice ball movement here by Atlanta. Prince's shot is good. And really, as the three-pointers keep dropping, you get the sense that the frustration is mounting for the defense. Yeah, and they either have been unwilling or unable to take that shot away. All the numbers speak for themselves. Siakam showing great versatility on the offensive end. And the three ball is good. One of the things you've got to admire and respect about him is his aggressiveness at the offensive end, always in attack mode. And it's Halliburton missing. Stocked in against Prince. And it's denied! Sent back by Siakam. Stocked in the pass to Halliburton. Siakam. And he got that one up in time, but doesn't go in. And so it's Atlanta having no problems at all. Up 29 points heading into the next quarter. And with as many three-pointers as they drain, it's easy to see why they're on the cusp of a blowout. We've got more in store for you right after this. And it's time now to bring you our State Farm Assist of the Game. Uh, just true artistry right there. I mean, great decision on where to go with the ball. And how about the perfect delivery? And they'd love to see every possession in this way. True team basketball. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today as we get going in quarter number four. So with Williams on the bench, here's who Rick Carlisle's going with. Carlos Boozer out there with Benedict Matherin. Then it's Stockton. Then there's Jackson, and it's Archibald in at the one. You know, this has been a totally different half for him. He definitely looks more comfortable now, guys. To the inside, Matherin. No good that time. Prince with the defensive effort. Atlanta shooting the lights out in this building. 68% from the field. Knocks down the three ball. 12 straight points off of three-pointers, and the D looks shell-shocked. And guys, now that they're rolling from out there, the defense has to really get up into them. You've got to almost be in their jerseys to try to deny those looks. Now, here is Young. Pass to Pakusevsky. The shot's good on the assist by Igudala. 
Iguodala has got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. On the wing, Stockton. Now the pass to Boozer. And the dunk by Boozer. Stockton loves finding the open teammate. Does it again here. Passes to Pokrzewski. Hunter for three. Another three for Atlanta. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. Well, when you look at the assist totals, heck, they've been clearly the better team. And, and that's got to happen if they want to have a chance to turn this thing around. I mean, he needs to just take the game over. I mean, it seems like he's been hesitant to pull the trigger. Enzo Stockton will bring it up for the Indiana Pacers. Archibald with the bucket. And seeing Archibald dominate the game with this coin, pretty good. I mean, he plays with a lot of confidence, too. Fun to watch. Now, here's Hunter. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. It's going to be on Isaiah Jackson. No question, he got bumped on that shot. Yeah, the officials didn't need to talk that one over. It was obvious. And one of the big changes to college basketball, Clark, as you know, the NIL, name, image, and likeness. It, it seems like that would impact the choice to enter the NBA draft. I don't think there's any question it's had that impact. Some guys that were borderline draft picks now not being penalized for being on, on scholarship can monetize their name, image, and likeness and do so to the tune of some fairly significant dollars in some cases. And even if the money is not NBA large, it still could close the gap for a family of a player that might be struggling and could use some additional income. And the teardrop, it's good, and it's his sixth make against 11 attempts. Now that was nasty, absolutely nasty. Halliburton looking like a street baller with that kind of dribble move, major handles. For Indiana, they've gone six of eight from the field in the fourth so far. It's been a great start to this final quarter for them. Traps in the train. Watch out. Now that he's got his first three of the half, there might be more in store. And that one's good. Hunter. Big miscommunication on defense. He recognizes it and quickly takes advantage. Boy, the defense looks shell-shocked. I mean, they're on the ropes right now, on their heels. Now, here is Halliburton. Akusevsky grabs the miss. Akusevsky's got four rebounds now tonight. Young. It's rebounded by Indiana. Siakam's got four rebounds in this game. Here's Archibald, and there are the Pacers with another bucket. And the all-around game of Siakam, so adept at working the ball to open guys. And Young kicks to Iguodala. Off target from three-point range. For Indiana, they've gone 8 of 11 from the field in the final period. Great shooting down the stretch. Boozer against Hunter. Nice move. That's another one for him. His fifth in just seven shots. Got to appreciate the interior game of Boozer. I mean, really does a nice job scoring in the paint. Has a high arcing shot. It helps him do so. Well, guys, this was never really a contest. Just a total obliteration, if you will. And you can safely say mission accomplished now for the Hawks. Their hard work on the glass paid off. I tell you what, they're both excellent rebounding teams, and it was a tough battle underneath all game. And I think ultimately that earned the W. And this will make it 41 victories for them on the year. And with this win, it gives them a sweep of the season series, even though it's just a brief two game. I tell you what, no matter how brief it is, anytime you can get a season series sweep, you're happy. The one player that really stands out, of course, in this one, it was a dazzling game for Big Dog. Boy, this game really had his name all over it. I mean, he relished being the guy to carry the load offensively. Here's Archibald. To the paint. Here's Siaka. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. Uh, a big man who can score, rebound, and pass. This is why Siakam has become a huge piece of this team. Siakam hits them both. 36 seconds left to play here in the fourth. Young with the ball. 
It's deflected. Hunter, the pass to Pakushevsky. Gets the three-pointer to fall. And you can sense that these fans, these players, they are ready to celebrate. And I think they can start that celebration right now. I mean, what a terrific team victory. Oh, reversed at home. That was pretty. Agreed. The agility on display. Yes, sir. Power and grace. That had it all. And credit the whole team. It was a focused, concerted effort to put this one away. Yeah, what a time to put the hammer down. Any hope of a comeback diminished. And so Atlanta takes this one by a big margin. This game may not have been the most exciting we've ever seen, but you have to appreciate just what a clinical performance they put on. I know their fans appreciated it, and we saw at times just stretches of excellent defense. Potency from an offensive standpoint as well. They, they were pretty much dominant. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks with John Wall. John, it sure looks like the chemistry is coming together. What is the bond like with your teammates? Uh, we enjoy playing with each other. Uh, we have great chemistry. We all work hard and we know how much we mean to each other, how much we work every day, and uh, we're just trying to keep getting better each game. Well, the work is paying off, John. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. David, thank you as always. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For David Aldridge, Greg Anthony, and Clark Kellogg, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for being with us. As we leave you with our New Balance player of the game, Big Dog.